Is Psycho Fox still good? Psycho Fox is a 2D platformer released exclusively on the Sega Master System back in 1989. It is a sequel of sorts to the NES game Kid Cool, released the year prior in Japan, and was followed up by Decap Attack for the Sega Genesis in 1991. Together, the games make a trilogy of sorts, spanning three different consoles. Psycho Fox was also well received by the gaming press at the time, despite the Master System never really catching on in North America. Electronic Gaming Monthly scored the game a 7 out of 10, stating, This game does have some rough points, but the graphics, action, and options elevate it to the position of one of the better Sega 8-bit offerings. Mean Machines Magazine gave the game a 9 out of 10, noting, Psycho Fox is easily one of the best platform games available on the Master System, and is a vital addition to any self-respecting player's collection. Finally, the video game critic rated the game an A, proclaiming, This may be the best platform game I've played on the Master System. So, is Psycho Fox still this good? Let's take a look. At first glance, Psycho Fox seems very similar to Super Mario Bros. in appearance, with simple level geometry and sparse backgrounds. You can't even backtrack through the level, and one of the power-ups is invincibility. And if these aren't Goomba ripoffs, I don't know what is. However, other than a few superficial touches, Psycho Fox is very much its own beast. Like other platformers of the time, your goal is to make it from the left side of the level to the exit at the right side of the level, and then move on to the next one. Along the way, you'll discover different eggs you can break open to hopefully find helpful items. The most important item is the birdfly. This little sidekick acts as both a secondary weapon as well as your only hit point. While you can jump on enemies or punch them, the ability to simply chuck the birdfly at them is far less risky. And while our hero normally dies in a single hit, if you've got the birdfly on your back, he'll die instead, letting you continue the adventure. The next item is the Psycho Stick. This allows you to change characters, which really gives Psycho Fox its signature gimmick. There are four characters in all, and they all feel drastically different. The default Fox possesses average jump, speed, and acceleration characteristics. The Hippo has a reduced jump, making it tough to take on enemies, but can punch through special blocks, unlocking alternate pathways through the stages. The Monkey is slower than the Fox, but has a ridiculously high jump, like Luigi, allowing him to reach platforms not possible with the other characters. Finally, there is the Tiger. He possesses the quickest acceleration and top speed, however, can be a bit too fast if you don't know what is ahead. He can also easily skip over water, which is occasionally required. In addition to the Psycho Stick and Birdfly, eggs may also contain a screen-clearing bomb called a Straw Effigy, temporary invincibility called Magic Medicine, an extra life, money bags, and finally, enemies. Collecting money bags are key to racking up extra lives. At the end of each stage, there is a gambling section of sorts. The more money bags you collected during the level, up to four, the more chances you have at earning goodies. It's a neat little reward if you're adverse to using the infinite continue Psycho Fox provides. Moving on, Psycho Fox contains seven different worlds, each with three levels. The first world is Mystical Mountains. This pretty much sets the tone for the entire game. Generally speaking, there is a low path, high path, and middle path through each and every level. Some paths are more challenging, contain more obstacles and enemies, while other paths are easier or contain more eggs containing helpful goodies. Next up is Skull Land. In all honesty, this isn't all that different from Mystical Mountains, though there are these skulls that will occasionally come to life. Skull Land also introduces collapsing bridges, which often have deathly spikes underneath them. Now is a good time to talk about Psycho Fox's biggest flaw, the momentum. Unlike Mario or Sonic where the protagonist can get up to speed rather quickly, in Psycho Fox it will take a longer than usual time to get up to speed, even with the fast tiger. From a standstill, it can be tough to gather enough momentum to jump to a nearby platform or land a hit on an enemy. The learning curve is steep here and will take a good 30 minutes or so to get a feel for the mechanics. There isn't anything inherently wrong with the controls, but it does make Psycho Fox feel a bit dated. Diabolical Desert is next and finally offers a distinctly different set of scenery. 
There are new obstacles as well, such as the sand, which slows you down, as well as collapsing stairways. The stage also contains a unique piece of music not found anywhere else in the game. Basically, Psycho Fox has three pieces of music for the seven worlds. They are catchy enough for sure, with decent melodies and the complexity is better than average for the system. Still, while it is quality stuff, it certainly cannot compare to some of the epic music found on a certain other 8-bit platform. After clearing the desert, Fox and friends make their way to the Underground Passageway, also known as Mario Ripoff Stone. The set pieces are really changed up here, though I can't help but feel all of these pipes are a nod to a certain plumber. It's also worth noting you really start to notice an increase in difficulty here. The quarters are a lot more cramped, making it more awkward to avoid obstacles and take down certain enemies. On the flip side, the level design also really shines here. Like I noted earlier, there are multiple paths through the stages, and if you try new paths each time you die, you'll eventually find a route that offers the least amount of resistance with the most amount of reward. While Psycho Fox is by no means a short game, especially by 8-bit standards, I like how replayability is built right into the levels themselves, encouraging repeat playthroughs and experimentation. After making your way through the underground passageway, we arrive at Ice Zone. Not even Psycho Fox is immune to this platformer staple, and man are these three levels a real pain. Another problem Psycho Fox has is an abundance of blind jumps. If you are using the Fox and moving at full speed, often Fox will land in a safe location, but if your timing is off or you are using one of the other three characters, landing can be a real crapshoot. At least 90% of my deaths through the game came from these blind jumps. Memorization of a level helps or just sticking to the lowest path, but there is something flawed here. Thankfully, Psycho Fox does offer infinite continues, and continuing will bring you right back to the level you died at, mitigating the issue to an extent. After skating our way through Ice Zone, we arrive at the seventh and final world, Underground Cavern. While not as tricky as Ice Zone, Underground Cavern is a worthy final world, with plenty of tough enemy placements, plenty of stage hazards, and plenty of spikes waiting to destroy our furry heroes. But before I move on to the final boss, let's talk about the first six, and by six I mean three. First up is Mad Tumbler. This guy is made up of multiple segments, and you have to use this air cannon to take out these segments while he tries to jump on you. Clear them all and he is defeated. Robofly is next. All you have to do to defeat him is spray the pesticide when he gets near the aerosol can. It's cute for sure, but lacking in depth. Finally, there is Doramare. All you have to do here is jump on his head three times, which is exceptionally easy. These three bosses are repeated a second time with minor tweaks, but these are all really easy. The patterns are very simple to dodge and shouldn't give you many problems. Last but not least is the Mad Fox himself, the boss of World 7. He moves back and forth across the screen launching lightning bolts at you. Thankfully, he left a cannon behind, which you can punch, launching the cannonball. After three successful hits, Mad Fox is defeated and we are treated to one of the most bizarre endings I've ever experienced in a video game. What is going on here? I may never know, but it's cool nonetheless. After this strange segment is over, we are treated to some equally baffling credits. About the only thing left to talk about are the graphics. As one would hope from a 1989 release, Psycho Fox is a fairly good looking game. The environments are a touch sparse, but all of the sprites have a very bold and clean style, and this lack of color does look appealing. The characters themselves, on the other hand, all look excellent. They each have a distinct color palette, and they really pop against the more subdued environments. While the punching animation is a bit lazy, there is something charming about the ultra-simple animations. So, with the graphics out of the way, we arrive back where we started. Is Psycho Fox still good? Without a doubt, Psycho Fox is still a great game. It has its problems for sure, such as some seriously slow momentum, set pieces that look a bit too similar, lackluster bosses, blind jumps, and a lack of music variety. However, it more than makes up for it where it counts. Psycho Fox is just a ton of fun to play. While the controls are weird, they are responsive and predictable. It is possible to get used to the slow momentum, and the fact that you have three ways to kill enemies offers a lot of flexibility in how you tackle the stages. 
I also loved the level design, cheap falls and all. There were times where I was stuck on a level, but then when I discovered an alternate route, Psycho Fox becomes very manageable. It's very rewarding to learn the perfect path through the levels, and rewarding design makes for a ton of fun. The fact levels aren't huge, this is 8-bit after all, and you have infinite continues brings the frustration down to a very minimal level. I also find the length to be about perfect. There are 21 levels in all, and despite myself being exceptionally rusty at this game, I still cleared it in about 2 hours, making this a great game to play in a single sitting. Once you learn all of the levels and optimal paths, this could probably be cleared in less than an hour. And I think this about covers it. Psycho Fox is still a great title and holds up well in 2016. Now, don't get me wrong, this can't compete with the insanely polished 8-bit Mario trilogy, but the game is charming as hell, extremely enjoyable, and infinitely replayable. It just may in fact be the best platformer on the Sega Master System.